This month we are choosing our own adventure. In youth group we talked about the adventures that you guys have gone on with your friends. We had some really crazy ones like getting lost on your bike with your friends in the middle of Houston. And then we had stuff as simple as playing soccer with your friends at Blue Hole. I'm guessing that you've gone on more than one adventure with your friends before or that you'd like to and you probably have different friends who would be perfect for different adventures. But what if I told you that you had to choose only one of the adventures and it was the only way that you could spend time with any of your friends. The same adventure over and over and over again. Maybe you love playing soccer, but can you imagine how terrible it would be if you could only play soccer with your friends? Even with the friend who hates soccer or would rather be playing video games. This month, we're gonna be talking a lot about adventures because you have been invited on the adventure of a lifetime. It's anything but boring and the company, you guys, is pretty amazing. The adventure that you've been invited into is the journey of knowing, loving, and following Jesus. The person who is inviting you on this adventure is your creator, the God who made you and knows you better than anyone. The adventure is a relationship with Jesus. Now, maybe you're thinking praying and going to church are not really what I would call an adventure. And I get it. Your faith journey is an adventure because it's a relationship with the creator of the universe. But how are we supposed to connect with someone we can't physically hang out with? We know how to spend time with our friends, but how do you spend time with God? Most people only know how to answer this question in a few ways, like pray or go to church or read the Bible. But you know how there were many different ways that you like to spend time with your friends? Spending time with God can be that way too. It is unique and personal to you. I could tell you about all of the ways that I spend time with God or all of the ways people in scripture spent time with God, but there is one specific person that I want us to take a look at today, Jesus. This is Luke chapter five, verses one through 16. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake, the people were crowding around him, listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked, him to pull out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and says, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus was a busy dude. He was calling disciples, healing people, and spending time with people who needed to know God. But in the middle 
of everything, Luke reminds us that Jesus stopped and spent time with God. Scripture tells us that Jesus often went off by himself to pray. So is that it? Is that what we're supposed to do? Is praying in silence all by yourself the way to spend time with God? If solitude and silence and closed eyes were mandatory for spending time with God, there are some of us who would probably never do it, or maybe we'd try, but we'd be fast asleep before we ever got to the amen. If this was the one and only way to spend time with God, I can understand why you might be skeptical about a relationship with God feeling like an adventure. But what if Jesus didn't pray in silence and solitude because it was the one and only way to spend time with God? What if Jesus prayed this way because it was the best way for him to spend time with God? I mean, think about it. At the time, Jesus couldn't really go anywhere without being followed. It makes sense that he would need some alone time. You don't have to be a celebrity to appreciate silence and solitude, though. Just like Jesus needed a break from the busyness of his life in order to connect with God, prayer might give you a little peace in the midst of chaos, too. But what if I told you silent, solitary prayer is not the only way for you to spend time with God? A relationship with Jesus is personal. Just like your relationship with your friends are personal. You may spend time with one friend listening to music and playing basketball with another friend. You can spend time with Jesus in a way that is personal to you. Jesus is the example who shows us that spending time with God is important. We have been given the freedom in how we get to know God more closely. You have the freedom to figure out how you can best connect with God. You don't have to connect with God the way your parents do, or the way I do, or the way your friends do. When it comes to knowing God, it's like we get to choose our own adventure. There isn't one way to connect with God, because knowing God is an adventure, not a formula.